All right. So I think we should start. Um, I'm Jan Yoshiwara with the State Board for Community and Technical Colleges. And um, so I think what we're going to do today <laughs> is eliminate the feedback echoes. <laughs> So this is a webinar to talk about the request for applications for Guided Pathways Implementation Grants from College Spark. Um, <clears throat> so here's the agenda uh, for what we're going to try to cover. And we're going to try to get through the material here in about 30 minutes so that we reserve at least half or more of the time for uh, Q&A. Um, so, uh, in terms of the agenda, so I'm going to go through uh, the highlights of the request for applications, and I'm not going to go through the RFA material in a lot of detail because you have it in writing. So I'm just going to try to hit the highlights, and we're going to try to talk about what the overall goals of the RFA are. <clears throat> so um, there's a little bit of feedback, so I'm just wondering if somebody is. Um, I'm just wondering if there's, there's a couple of you who haven't muted your mic, so I'm just wondering if you can uh, do that now so we can avoid the feedback. Um, the second part is that Heather Gingrich from College Spark will talk about the grant process because the implementation grants are actually being awarded by College Spark directly um, to the pilot colleges. And then the third part will be um, a little discussion about how the project is going to be evaluated. Um, and Dina Haig, who is one of the independent evaluators for College Spark Washington, will, um, will talk about those slides. And then at the end, we'll have the question and answer. So we're going to, the three of us are going to talk through um, <clears throat> our slides. And then we'll have a question and answer, and all of us will be available to answer questions. And if you have questions, just write them into chat at, at any time during uh, while we're talking, and we will uh, cover the questions in the order in which they're received um, after we're done with the PowerPoint. OK. <clears throat> so the. Um, the highlights of the uh, RFA are that the purpose of this grant of these grants um, is to support implementation of guided pathways, and so the the elements, the major elements of guided pathways are described in the RFA, and they're just summarized here. Um, so uh, meta majors, and I think that many of you have been to the kickoff workshop. You've read. Books, you've heard presentations by others, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about and explaining what uh, Guided Pathways means. Um, but these are the elements that uh, we will be asking you to respond to in the RFA. So um, meta majors, um, program and degree maps for uh, four majors, uh, programs at the colleges. Um, predictable schedules for students, um, enhanced intake and advising, so um, a more um, uh, a more robust um, advising intake and advising process, onboarding and tracking system for students, um, accelerated remediation, which is an area that uh, our colleges, our system, and all of you have been working on uh, for uh, several years now. And then math pathways um, that align with the, the meta majors and the program and degree maps. And on the math pathways, this is also work that um, many of you have been doing for the last couple of years. Um, we also have a, um, we're selected to participate in a math pathways project with the Dana Center at the University of Texas Austin. So we'll be getting a lot of support for um, those math pathways that are aligned with majors uh, over the next three years from that project. Hmm. 
Okay, so I'm having trouble advancing the slide. Okay. <coughs> so um, the RFA questions that are in Appendix B of the application are um, really designed to assess your college's readiness to implement the guided pathways elements at scale, so those six bullets that I just went through. Um, and we really have two goals with the guided pathways effort. One is to, um, obviously, is to increase retention and completion rates for all students across the board. Um, and the second goal is at the same time that we're doing that is to close the gap in retention and completion for low-income students and students of color. So we want to do both. Um, and this was a, a specific request, a not request, but I think um, a, a, a goal of the Instruction Commission and the Student Services Commission last year when we talked about um, a, a system level implementation of, of guided pathways. Um, there is in the application materials reference to a draft work plan, and I uh, just wanted to make sure that we wrote it into the RFA, but we also wanted to emphasize that you do not have to complete the work plan as a part of the application. We provided the work plan to show the framework for the planning that pilot colleges will be doing um, over the duration of the, the uh, implementation grant period. Um, and so that just gives you a picture about some of the things that you'll be working on, but it was not intended for you to fill it out. Um, and then <clears throat> um, I think, as you know, um, there will be two rounds of selecting colleges for uh, implementation grants uh, from College Spark. The first round is this spring. Uh, it's the round that we are uh, just launching now. And uh, there will be a second round of colleges selected for um, implementation grants in 2018, so two years from now. Um, so this is a summary of all the things that you should have in your completed application. So a signed participation agreement signed by your president, <clears throat> um, which is attachment A in the RFA. Your responses to the uh, RFA questions um, in attachment B. There are 13 questions, so we are hoping that 12 pages is an ample amount of room for you to to respond to those 13 questions. We debated but did not specify, we may, uh, we did not specify a font and margins. Um, but please don't make us regret not specifying that. We, we, you know, we need to be able to read your applications. And so um, we just ask that you make sure that we can actually read what you are uh, trying to communicate to us. <clears throat> the third thing is the budget form. Um, attachment C, um, it's a budget form that has multiple years in it. You only need to complete year one at this point. If you're selected for one of the grants, then you will be asked to complete um, years two, three, four, and five uh, of the budget form. Um, I noticed on my materials when I printed them out that <clears throat> the budget form said attachment B. It should really say attachment C, and we'll, we'll fix that. Um, the fourth piece is a statement of support from your faculty leadership. And then the, the last piece is some evidence that your, um, that your governing board is committed to the Guided Pathways implementation. And that can be um, board meeting minutes, it could be a resolution um, by your board, uh, it could be a letter signed by your board chair. So we just uh, are looking for evidence that your that your board uh, understands the kind of the level of of uh, systemic change that's required to implement guided pathways, and that they they are fully behind um, the college uh, for doing that. So this is just a brief on the timeline. Um, <clears throat> I just noticed that there's obviously a mistake on the first line that should say March 7th, not May 7th. The RFA has already been posted, and I assume you've seen it or you wouldn't be on this uh, webinar. Um, 
The applications are due by 4 o'clock on April 21st, so you've got almost six weeks to uh, put your applications uh, together, and those can be emailed to Brooke Allender. Her email is uh, in the RFA. Um, we, um, the, the evaluation of the uh, uh, applications is going to be done jointly by College Spark staff, um, the College Spark um, evaluators, and um, uh, State Board staff. And so what we're going to do is read all the applications and identify around seven, or sorry, around ten finalists and then we will notify you um, the week before, the first week in May, and set up interviews for you um, <clears throat> so that we can talk to you about questions that we might have on your application on May uh, 10th or 11th. And then we expect to, once we complete those interviews, we expect to um, huddle and uh, identify a, uh, five pilot colleges to recommend to College Sparks Board for implementation grants, and so we will notify you about that uh, at the end of May. And then um, the College Spark Board meets once a quarter, so their next meeting following um, the RFA selection process will be on July 12th. And um, hey, welcome to the mute. Welcome to the webinar. Uh, just mute your mics, please. Thank you. <coughs> Um, so the grants will be officially approved by College Sparks Board on July 12th. Um, and so just following that, we will have the first convening for the pilot colleges on July 27th and 28th. And we haven't <clears throat> identified a location yet, but we will shortly, and uh, we'll be letting you know that. But wanted you to have those dates um, on your calendars so that if you're selected to be a pilot college, you'll have that, those dates available. And then <clears throat> this last line is just to, again, to reiterate that we will be starting up round two to select the um, second group of colleges in March of 2018. I don't know why I'm having trouble advancing these. Okay. All right. Heather. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Heather from College Spark. Thanks for joining us on the webinar today. I'm going to go over just a few things, the first being the commitments of the colleges that are selected for funding in this initiative. Um, the first commitment that we wanted to highlight was that selected colleges would be um, expected to commit to fully implementing all elements of Guided Pathways with all or nearly all of their students. Um, the second commitment we wanted to highlight was that there would be participation in up to four workshops or meetings per year. Uh, the, the appropriate of the team that would participate in each of those workshops from workshop to workshop, but there would be a team from each of the colleges that would be participating in each of those meetings. Uh, selected colleges will complete a work plan during the first year of the initiative, and then each year after that they will be asked to update their work plan as well as tell us how implementation is going. Uh, with regards to implementing Guided Pathways. And then the last uh, commitment we wanted to highlight was just that all the colleges Can you that are... Guided Pathways? I can't figure it out. No, I, I got on there. Oh. But we... Okay, so is, it on, is it on mute? It's making it hard to hear. I just see the initials LS or IS. I'm not sure which one it is. But, um, so if you could just please double check. There's several of you who aren't actually muted. Uh, to mute yourself, if you're doing it on the screen, there should be a button on the top right-hand corner that looks like a microphone. You can just hit that button and that will mute you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, final commitment is just that you would be participating in this evaluation. That will just involve um, providing, providing information and, and being part of a site visit uh, with the admission evaluators. So next slide, Jan. The other, one of the, the second um, element that I was going to go over for the webinar was the selection criteria. There's a complete list of selection criteria in the RFA document that you can refer to. We wanted to highlight just a few of them that are sort of the most important selection criteria to the group that's, um, that's going to be reviewing applications. The first one is just evidence of implementing reforms at scale. 
So there's no expectation that colleges will implement all elements of guided pathways on day one with all students. But at the same time, this isn't an initiative you would implement with 25 students and gradually imp implement it to more students over time. So we're, we're going to want to hear about in the application what you've done at scale and what was the results. Did you actually get to all, tar all targeted students involved? And how did you get to that point? We really want to hear about your experience trying to implement large scale reforms. Another set of criteria is just college's demonstrated ability to make student supports mandatory. Your college may have made a student success course, orientation, advising, some, some, some service to students that was made mandatory um, and actually resulted in all the students actually doing it. So um, we know that there often is a process from stating that something is mandatory um, to actually having a mechanism in place to making sure all students actually participate in something. So we want to hear how that process was for you and how you made it to something that was actually mandatory for all students. Also looking at um, experiences at your college of implementing a policy change that increased student success, things like ending late registration. And then finally, that was of the top uh, four or five selection criteria that's most important to the um, selection committee is just each college's readiness to plan for and implement each of the guided pathways elements at scale. So really, why is this the right time for your college to embark on this work, which is going to be really challenging? What makes this the right time for your college? The rest of the selection criteria is listed here. We're looking at strength of leadership, uh, the commitment of faculty impl to implement guided pathways, IT and IR capacity. This isn't an achieving the dream kind of initiative where the, the focus is um, the first and foremost on IR and IT capacity, but you would need to be able to track students in terms of knowing where they're at, are they making progress, and if not, uh, targeting interventions towards students. Strengths of communications, um, website is a big piece of it big piece of this, does your website clearly communicate uh, the pathways and with sufficient detail that students could get all the information they needed to figure out what they need to take to get to their goal? Do you have the capacity to get there if you're, if you're not there yet? Uh, focus on equity for both College Spark and the State Board. Uh, closing achievement gaps is one of the primary drivers that, that brought us together to look at a guided pathways initiative. So we'll want to hear about your campus's work on closing uh, achievement gaps, improving equity, and how Guided Pathways fits into those goals for your campus. And then demonstrated capacity of craft department collaboration. A lot of the Guided Pathways work is, would, would need to be done with teams of faculty and staff together, so what experience do you have with that? Experience ex and success with large-scale math reform efforts. Um, strength of current, current orientation advising. What have you done in the past five years to increase the um, robustness of orientation and advising activities? And then finally, strong ties between course learning outcomes and program learning outcomes between programs and market degree requirements. So the questions in the RFA were really um, designed to help us get to information on these, um, these selection criteria, and hopefully they will, they will do so. Um, okay, Jan, next slide. All right, and my, the final thing that I wanted to cover was just a few de details on the grant process. So the eligible applicants are Washington's community and technical colleges. Uh, we would like applications to come from individual colleges, not from districts. Funding would be $100,000 per year for five years of the initiative. Disbursements would be authorized annually and based on adequate progress towards full information, full implementation. Um, again, you know, the, we, we certainly know that there will be bumps along the way and things won't always go as, as, as planned, but the expectation is that colleges will be meeting the milestones outlined in their work plan with regards to implementing guided pathways. Expenditures of the grant funds, um, it's a pretty liberal policy. It can really be anything that supports implementation of guided pathways, including salaries, faculty, and staff stipends, materials, travel consultants. There's probably other things in there that you might want to spend the funding on, and it would probably be okay. Just include it in your budget. Um, and then just a reminder that unused grant funds from one year can be carried forward to future years. So with that, I'm going to turn it out over to Dina Haig, who's going to talk a little bit about the evaluation. Hi there. Uh, I am Dina Haig, one of the independent evaluators for College Spark Washington. So you can see that College Spark has built in an independent third-party evaluation, and that's us, Dina Haig and Bob Watrous, to help everyone learn about what's working, what's not, and what it means in terms of continuous improvement and achieving the goals of Guided Pathways approach. So we approach evaluation in a pretty active and engaged way. We're going to be collaborating with all the partners, College Spark, the State Board, and the funded colleges in designing and conducting this work. 
we'll be using both qualitative data, the kind of data we can get at site visits from structured interviews, from colleges, other sources, and also quantitative data produced by both the state board and the colleges. And we're going to be providing timely feedback to the partners on what's working and where course corrections or maybe different kinds of supports might be needed. Uh, next slide, please, Jim. Uh, so I'd like to talk a little bit about the focus of this evaluation because it has a couple of different aspects to it. The, Partly it will focus on implementation, uh, including how colleges are applying guided pathways practices given that they start at different points at, and with different strengths and weaknesses and the like. Um, we're going to be looking at what seems to be going well and what is not during implementation, how the state board is supporting the efforts, and what else might be needed. Uh, it will also focus on results. We're going to be working with the funded colleges to identify and track some useful uh, short-term measures. So gauging the short-term Im impact of the work as it goes along during implementation. Um, in addition to looking at the data on longer-term outcome measures that will be provided by the State Board. And we're going to be exploring the implications for policy, practice, and systems at both college and state levels. So any broad issues that we're seeing that might apply college-wide or system-wide to pursuing guided pathways, we'll be raising and talking about those issues. Uh, and next slide, please. Thanks, Jen. Um, evaluation activities, some of these are going to include visiting colleges uh, once or twice a year where we're going to be listening to what people have to say about how impl implementation is going. We'll be doing structured interviews. We may be doing focus groups where that looks particularly useful or appropriate. We'll be asking some questions on those visits about what we're hearing with the aim of helping colleges reflect on their work, kind of take a step backwards out of the day-to-day -day routine and look at how it's going and uh, what's going well, what next steps might be, what other resources they might be interested in. Um, we'll provide some quick feedback and short memos to the colleges, and those memos will summarize positive developments we're seeing as well as any questions or concerns that come up during the visit, things to think about. We'll be reviewing college and state board data as those data become available and the implications for short and longer term progress. We'll be providing some feedback on the State Board's broader effort to build system capacity for guided pathways. And we'll be providing summary reports every year that focus on key issues and themes that we're seeing emerge across the funded colleges. And that's kind of part of the bigger learning agenda and continuous improvement focus of the evaluation. And All right, so with that, yes. we'll turn it back over to Jan to facilitate the uh, questions. Okay, so let's see. Uh, if you have questions, now's the time to write them in chat. And uh, so there's, all of us will stay on, the College Spark folks, the evaluators, and got a couple of people here in our office, David Prince and Joe Holliday. Uh, Joyce Hammer, um, who helped with the metrics and uh, helped write the RFA. Do you have any questions? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So it looks like the first question is, um, can we submit attachments of materials we think would be informative? For example, could we include a copy of an equity, diversity, and inclusion plan to the review committee? I don't know. Heather, do you have any thoughts about that? I think what would be especially helpful would be just highlighting in the narrative what about that plan is, is particularly, particularly telling or what evidence it provides. 
So I wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't include attachment without telling us in the narrative why it's, why it's useful. I think really um, a summary, summarizing the plan in your application as opposed to providing it is going to be much more useful. I agree. I think um, because you wrote your diversity and equity plan for a particular purpose, um, and so I think to pick out the most relevant parts to respond to the questions that are in the RFA would be very helpful to us. All right. Um, you can see all these questions, right? We can. <laughs> um, no, just we can. <laughs> no, just we can? The yeah. rest of you can't see them? Hmm. Okay. No. We're not seeing them. Um, okay. So the second question is, uh, who will be involved in the interviews for the 10 finalists, both at the college and on the reviewer end? Um, <clears throat> That's a really good question. So on our on the on the staff end here, I think it'll be uh, folks from College Spark and folks from our office. Um, there's been a team of about mm, uh, eight of us or so that have been involved in uh, putting the RFA together and putting the the kickoff workshops that we had in January together. Um, we've been kind of um, Working together as a team, we've been waiting for Lisa Garcia Hansen to appear, um, who is our Student Success Center yeah. Director. And I know that Lisa is on the call. Um, um, and I think once she gets here that she will also be very actively engaged in that. So in terms of the college folks that will uh, participate, we haven't really figured that out yet, but I'm uh, assuming that it will be um, the leadership at the college in instruction, student services, um, institutional research, um, uh, faculty, you know, um, we, we haven't specified that, but we will before we get to the, um, um, before we notify the colleges. Would it be helpful to you if we figured that out sooner rather than later? So we'll work on that. All right. Let's see. Okay. We will work on that. Let me see. Next question. Um, is there a definition of student that you want us to use for data inclusion? For example, full-time, part-time, fall enrolled, et cetera. So, can you say your name? Yeah. This is David Prince, and I can answer that. Uh, first off, the overall metrics uh, from the State Board will be uh, looking at all of your students in all of the colleges, and there'll be several uh, cohorts. There'll be a core cohort and an expanded cohort. That'll be based on criteria, so it'll cover all of your students because overall this initiative is about addressing scale and in increasing overall completion rate. So that's what the entire metrics are look looking at. They're not looking at particular students that are getting a particular intervention, they're saying it's a big picture changing. Now that said, uh, Dina talked about how colleges might also, will also be providing information to her evaluation. And at that point, there may be particular students that you're pulling out and doing analysis on for questions they're asking you. But the overall metrics will be covering the entire, uh, you know, uh, the, the, uh, full transfer cohorts and full professional technical cohorts of uh, new students, new in fall and new in the calendar year, and then some subsets of those that will pull using criteria. So you won't be flagging students for us. Okay. So the next question is about um, the RFA narrative, narrative question number eight. So it's confirming that we want math and English, not math or English. So Joyce or, or Heather, do you want to respond to that question? Heather? <laughs> <laughs> it's, 
says math and English. Right. We sorry, wanted to... sorry. This is Rachel. I was muted and not uh, realizing oh, that I was muted. This is sorry, Rachel, Rachel from College Spark. We are interested in both math and English. I think it's fair to say at uh, College Spark we will be paying particularly close attention to what's happened with math because there's just usually further to go and it can sometimes uh, be, be a bigger hill to climb. But uh, we are interested in hearing what you've done with both, absolutely. So the next question is, will we know what the evaluation metrics are prior to the site visits? And um, I think the answer to that question is yes. Uh, we, have, um, we haven't developed the questions yet for the, um, and I, by the, if, we're not going to do site visits, they're going to be telephone interviews uh, with the folks uh, from the team, from the leadership at the college. Um, and we have not developed those, the, the question yet, the questions yet specifically, that's the next thing that's on our list of things to do. Um, we have some ideas about the questions because of the questions that were used in the AACC Pathways um, uh, application process or selection process. Um, so we're going to use those as a starting point. Um, but I think some of the questions will be um, general questions that we'll ask all of the colleges, the finalist colleges, and I think some will be specific based on the materials that you submit and questions that we have about some of the things that you wrote. But for the general questions, I think we will uh, definitely submit those to you ahead of time. Did you want to add anything, Heather? Yes. Yes, we do. So <clears throat> this is Bob Watrous, and uh, when I heard the question, uh, what I heard was evaluation metrics prior to the site visits. And so I, the way I interpreted that, and oh, I'm not, sorry. Well, yes. I might not go ahead, Bob. I, I may have answered the wrong question. Well, no, <laughs> I, I may be too, but I just wanted to add, in terms of at least for purposes of the evaluation and not evaluation of the applications. Some of the, the metrics uh, David at the State Board has been working on in terms of the longer term outcomes and definitions of those. But we, Dina and I as the evaluators, are looking to work with the colleges to develop those shorter term progress measures that Dina talked about in her PowerPoint. And in terms of that being ready prior to the site visits, uh, not sure whether that will be the case, but we're looking to work with the funded colleges to develop those shorter term progress measures. So I, that's the way I interpreted the metrics question. It may not be right, but again, part of it's date with David and the longer term outcome measures, and then part of it is with Dina and me and us working with the funded colleges to define those uh, shorter term progress measures that we'll be able to track over time. Okay. That's great. Thanks, Bob. I think you were right. Um, let's see. There's some chatting here. Oh, okay. So, Joyce, this might be a question for you. On Mass Pathways, the idea is to replace pre-calculus with other pathways, not to give students more than one way to get to pre-calculus. Yes? Again, sorry. <laughs> I'm in a different computer. Uh, yeah, sorry. So, uh, math pathways. The idea is to replace pre-calculus with other pathways, not to give students more than one way to get to pre-calculus. Is that correct? That could be one way to respond. I mean, that would be um, one initiative you could describe. But it's not to replace. It's not to really replace pre-calc. Pre it's to really to, you could describe, rather. right? You could describe, you know, different ways that you're approaching uh, students' pathways in mathematics. I'm not really answering that question, yeah. am I? This is Heather at College Spark. I just I just wanted to um, pipe in to say that you know my understanding of pathways, math pathways, and as they are part of a guided pathways initiative, is that math is aligned to programs of study. So there could be programs of study where a calculus pathway is still the most appropriate pathway, but there would certainly be other programs of study and other other meta majors 
where a different type of math pathway, such as statistics or quant, would be a more appropriate pathway. So that is the um, that is what we're looking for in terms of, of multiple math pathways. So not re not replacing pre-calculus as in making it go away, but creating multiple different kinds of pathways that lead to different kinds of math aligned with meta majors and programs of study. But you could have a pathway that did, that had an alternative to pre-calculus if that's something you've decided to do, correct? Yes, we we definitely yeah. want to see some of that. Yeah. Okay. So the next question is, um, what are you looking for in terms of IT capacity? So keeping in mind CTC link issues and other IT infrastructure issues. I can try that. Okay. So I, I think the biggest thing that you need to think about with IT capacity is linking to the idea of um, tracking students. It's, yep. it's the idea of that capacity is to be able to identify where students are, intervene, support, or stay out of the way as appropriate, but to know where they are on that, to, to be able to know where they are in as real a time as you can for uh, helping them. So it also has a big connection to advising as well. But I think in terms of IT, you're thinking about tracking students and all the people that need better information to be able to support that process. All right, so the next question is, you mentioned implementing guided pathways for most slash all students. We have many students who just take a couple of classes at our college. Would that be a negative for our college? Heather, would you like to take a shot at that? They should be degree. Yeah, I think, you know, we're really talking about degree-seeking students. Students who are either seeking to transfer or students who are seeking to get a particular credential within your college or within the community college system, um, not students who come to take one or two courses as part of a, you know, job refresher or life skills kind of experience. All right, the next question is, um, will we receive the protocol ahead of time for the evaluation piece? Sounds like it may need to be part of our IRB processes with focus groups and interviews, et cetera. I'm not sure I understand the question. Just, just to clarify, when uh, Bob and Dina mentioned focus groups, we're talking, they're talking about focus groups of faculty and staff and administrators, right, not, not students? Right. The, right. These are uh, people who are working on implementing guided pathways at the college. Is that, if that doesn't answer the question, then uh, certainly could you rephrase the question? Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll see if that gets rephrased. Um, so the next question is, looking at the selection criteria, some are more explicitly addressed in the narrative questions mm -hmm. than others. For example, IT capacity isn't directly called out. How do you want us to address that? That would be as, as David indicated. Be yeah. So, so questions like yeah. two and three, when we're looking at the student data, how you know that that'll be evident to us. So, but the, the other thing I would add to IT is also its information to the students. So, in a sense, too, your communication of your website is also, I think, part of that too. In a sense, it's for information to be transparent to everybody, so that include that would include the students. All right, and I think uh, the last question that I have here is, will um, basic skills ESL students be included in any of the metrics? Only if they're degree seeking. It's not, there's not an on-ramp metric for students here, but there is a uh, a, a disaggregation that looks at um, uh, current and former basic skill students as they're proceeding along. Okay, well that's the end of the questions um, that I can see on the chat here. If you have any other questions, please type them in now. And if we misinterpreted your question and didn't respond to your question of what you wanted to know, try it again.
Okay, so one other question came in. Um, so will the review team be looking at our website as part of the review process, or should we address our website in the narrative? You know, I, I think that we probably would, would be looking at websites, and if there's some way that you feel like your website doesn't reflect what you would want it to be, you can certainly describe that in the application and let us know. Um, what you see, you know, in the website that needs to be addressed as part of the gu your guided pathways implementation. Um, so there's one other question. If you think of a question later, can you send the question to Brooke and for us to respond to? Yeah, I think that's fair. So Brooke Allender's email address is in the RFA. So if, as you're filling out the RFA, there are some questions that didn't occur to you now, um, go ahead and ask us, and we'll get back to you. Good question, Lisa. Thank you. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Okay, I think we're good. Um, this was recorded. We're going to, um, and it's also uh, live captioned. So we're going to post it on our website. And if you or any of your colleagues want to go back and listen to the RFA or look at the PowerPoint, um, those will be available on our website in the same spot where all the other um, Guided Pathways materials are located. So thank you very much for your participation. And, um, you know, if you have any feedback on the webinar, why don't you just send me an email, because we are doing one tomorrow, and uh, so your feedback would be helpful to us. Um, we'll just fix the typos on the um, PowerPoint, but if you have any other thoughts about what would make it useful, helpful to people, um, uh, drop me a line, okay? jayoshiwara at sbctc.edu. Thanks a lot. Take care.